Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming here tonight. Can we please stand? You now sit down. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ikra Ahmad, and I'm a student here at East Tennessee State University. I would like to start off by thanking everybody for being here today and welcoming you to our school. It is my pleasure to now introduce you to our president, Dr. Brian Noland. Thank you and good morning. It, it, it's really my pleasure and honor to welcome each of you here today. Uh, this morning as I was preparing to come to the office, I reflected upon a meeting uh, earlier this year in which we were planning this event, uh, a meeting in which we were thinking through calendars, we were looking at schedules, and someone said, well, let's hold it at the end of March. It'll be beautiful. We can be outside by the fountain. <laughs> The flowers will be in bloom, the birds will be in the air. While it may not be spring officially outside, our hearts today are filled with warmth. Our hearts today are filled with warmth for those who have made today possible. Our hearts are filled with the joys of spring for all of those who have sacrificed and invested their time, talents, and abilities to make this the wonderful institution that it is today an institution that's big enough to change the world, but small enough to be a family. This is a day that we at ETSU come together to celebrate the completion of our beautiful memorial fountain and the placement of a new historical marker, marker both of which sit to my left by Borchuk Plaza. These structures tell a story that began more than 50 years ago. It is a story of hope, a story of inspiration, and a story of bravery. It is a story of five men and women who dreamed of a greater tomorrow and who saw higher education as the road to make their dreams possible. Their journeys began on this campus where in the late 1950s they desegregated East Tennessee State College. From these five students would emerge two educators, a civil rights activist, an esteemed leader in higher education, and a decorated military serviceman and respected businessman. Today you'll hear from them and from those who know our honorees. They're heroes. Their legacies inspire us. Both the marker and the fountain rest in the shadows of the buildings which were named in honor of some of the great presidents of this institution, men such as D.P. Culp, Charles Sherrod, Ergen Dossett, and Roy Nix. Again, I thank you for being here for this special event. But before turning it over to Commissioner Toby Bledsoe from our state's historical commission, I just want to take one moment of personal privilege. We're going to hear from Dr. Stanton shortly, but we're here today because of the work of Dr. Stanton to make this dream a reality. Under his leadership, this institution grew immeasurably. Under his leadership, this institution was transformed, but the seeds for that transformation began with the folks who are here with us today. I thank you for taking your time to travel to be with us. I thank you for your investments of time and energy to make this possible. You are our inspiration. 
you provide us hope. And as this week across campus, we're engaged in conversations related to civility. The greatest example of civility is in the faces that I look out to this afternoon. Commissioner Bledsoe. old cripple has to get up. Um, this is truly an honor and I'm privileged to be here today. Dr. Nolan, thank you. My old friend Dr. Stanton and his wife Nancy, thank you for all that you've done. And uh, all of our friends and supporters of ETSU, this is truly a remarkable day. Um, we have planned on this being, uh, since it's spring, uh, we had planned on having this outside where the marker is, and we were gonna have a grand unveiling and everything, but it's a wee bit hard to carry that thing around. <laughs> it, it weighs a ton. So, if you will excuse me, I will read to you being for Jonesboro, I love to tell stories. Um, I will read to you what's on the marker. In January 1956, Eugene Carruthers, a teacher at Langston High School in Johnson City, became the first black student enrolled in East Tennessee State College, even before it was a university. The graduate program. In August 1958, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Watkins Crawford, Clarence McKinney, George L. Nichols, and Mary Llewellyn Owens Wagner enrolled as the college's first black undergraduates. All were graduates of Langston High School. ETSU's undergraduate program was one of the state's first public institutions of higher education to desegregate, notably without incident. Um, you know, uh, we didn't have to call the governor. We didn't have to call the state guard or whatever those people were. We just did it. And to, the, to those students go a great, great thank you for doing it and for all the people of East Tennessee who thought it was the right thing to do. That's how we are. Anyway, since we don't have the plaque here to look at and unveil, I'll just say this historic marker was commissioned on the 29th day of October 2011 by the Tennessee State Historical Commission and unveiled, supposedly, this 25th day of March <laughs> 2013 up, upon the authority of the Tennessee State Legislature, represented by our honorable state representatives. If we have any here today, I don't want to miss anybody. But anyway, we, uh, I just, I also want to say that um, Mary Alexander is a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> once Mary, I've dealt with her before, but once Mary came upon this and got the support of Dr. Stanton and some lots of other people, uh, she called me, I must have been on her speed dial, uh, because every time we were getting ready for a historical meeting, Mary was calling and saying, now Toby, um, here we are. Well, she gave me an update. And you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get a marker through the historic commission. It has to be exactly correct, and uh, all the T's have to be crossed, and all the I's dotted. The, the uh, subcommittee from the Historic Commission looks at grammatical errors. They must have all been English teachers. 
and uh, they, they, and then they, they work on it and work on it and work on it and pass it and bring it back to the full commission, which we vote on. So, my good friend, Mary Alexander, thank you so much. You are my own personal historic representative of the whole state, and I appreciate you so much, and this has been a wonderful, wonderful thing that you and all of you have done. We appreciate you from the state of Tennessee and from the Historical Commission. Thank you so much for having me. East Tennessee State University's 10 bucks worth. What a perfect song on a day when we think about.
when we think about the life-giving symbolism of water. In your program, you will find detailed biographical information on our five honorees. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Dorothy Drinkard Hawkshaw to join me for the presentations. Dr. Drinkard Hawkshaw is director of the African and African American Studies program here at ETSU, and she served as chair of the committee for the commemorative fountain and historical marker. I will also ask President Brian Nolan to join me up front. Eugene Carruthers arrived on the East Tennessee State College campus in 1956 and enrolled in the Master of Arts in Administration program. He was the first African American student to enroll here. While in Johnson City, Mr. Carruthers was a teacher at Langston High School where he taught all science classes in grades seven through 12. Because he could play every musical instrument, he was also Langston's only instrumental music teacher and he directed the high school marching and concert bands. He left Johnson City to embark on a career in higher education administration, working at Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee State University in Nashville, and Volusia County Daytona Beach Community College in Florida. He also held leadership roles with a number of state, regional, and national education associations. Prior to entering ETSC, he had received a Bachelor of Science degree from Tennessee State University, and he later earned a Doctor of Law from Bethune-Cookman College, now University, in Daytona Beach, Florida. Eugene Carruthers died in January of 1980. Here today, on behalf of Mr. Carruthers and his family, is Mrs. Barbara Watterson. Mrs. Watterson was a student of Mr. Carruthers at Langston High School, and she is president of the Langston Reunion Group. Barbara Watterson. Well, I can't see if it's afternoon or still morning, but hello, everybody, just the same. To Dr. Uh, Nolan, Dr. Stanton, to our honorees, friends, and to those of you who work to bring this memorial to uh, fruition, I'm grateful as chairman of the Langston High School Reunion Committee, and some of my members are present here today I'm grateful to have been asked to stand in for the family of the late Dr. Eugene P. Carruthers. And on behalf of our reunion committee, we say thank you. What a wonderful tribute to our honorees. The evidence of your goodwill touches me deeply. While at Langston, Dr. Carruthers was known to us as Professor Carruthers. He was a man of great conviction, believing all things were possible. He was a dynamic teacher, listener, and counselor to his students. He wanted us to know that he was one of us. His message to his students was for us to believe in ourselves, and he dared us to dream. Our dreams would someday become our realities, and so we dreamed. Professionals from all walks of life are now the products of our dreams. I was a majorette and drum major for the Langston High School Band. The then Professor Carruthers was band director. He only allowed the best in our performances and in the music the band would play. New steps were learned, new tunes were played, 
We marched to a different drumbeat, for sure. And under the direction of the Langston Band, as, with his, he as our director, we became one of the best marching high school bands of that era. And now, because he had profound and abiding faith some 57 years ago in the American way of life, that individual success and social responsibilities can and should go together and could be achieved. He chose during those years of school segregations to enroll in what's accepted in East Tennessee State College, thereby creating a path and opening the doors of this great institution of higher learning for others who would someday choose to follow. Professor Epi, as we fondly called him, will always be remembered in the hearts of his students and the community that he served. For his family and for the spirit of Langston High School, we are honored to have been a part of the unveiling of this historical event today. Thank you and God bless you. On behalf of East Tennessee State University, we would like to present this plaque to the family of Professor Carruthers. Yes. And um, hopefully the family will be as grateful as we are that he was with us and that he's succeeded in making East Tennessee State now university one of the great universities in the country. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Elizabeth Watkins Crawford, who lives nearby in Elizabethton, Tennessee, attended Dunbar Elementary School and Langston High School before entering East Tennessee State College in 1958. She left school after a few quarters and fulfilled her dream of exploring the world as she traveled with her military husband and their three children. After the death of her first husband, she remarried and had two more children. Mrs. Crawford later decided to return to school. And at the age of 50, she entered Milligan College, where she majored in early childhood education. She now works as a substitute teacher in the Elizabethan City School System, and she is an active volunteer in her community. Please join me in welcoming to the microphone Mrs. Elizabeth Watkins Crawford. not real sure why I'm so popular, but thank you. <laughs> Welcome to everyone who braved this weather to get here to attend our dedication. And my first thank you, they were told that I'm supposed to have two minutes to say thank you to all the people. But it'd take me two years to thank everyone. I thank God and my parents, Converse and Grace Watkins, for the encouragement and the guidance that they gave me. I am the eldest of seven children, and my parents' education was very limited. My father had a third grade education and my mother an eighth grade education. Their dream of their children to finish high school became a reality. I thank my siblings who had to take over my chores when I had to leave. My parents instilled a love for learning. My teachers instilled a love for learning. There was a, um, a motto that hang in our auditorium at Langston High School. Those who attended Langston will remember this. That stated, enter to learn and depart to serve. Every place that I went in this world, I remembered that. I carried that in my heart. So I hope I have served some of you 
some type of way. Uh, I want to thank my cohorts who walked with me that day, especially Clarence. May he rest in peace. To the rest, they know me. I've met them, so they understand me. Congratulations. Congrats to the Amer uh, African Americans who came after us. I want to thank you for not letting our sacrifices be in vain. This applies to my son, Christopher Crawford, my daughter who attended ETSU, and my granddaughter who returns every year. She's a, at Tusculum, a junior at Tusculum, but she returns every year for the Upward Bound program to help them out. She returns to ETSU. Uh, Thank you for being brave enough to follow us along the way. Last but not least, thank you, Dr. Stanton, and to all of the African American programs and people who are part of or being here today. Um, and I have some. Uh, things that I want to talk about for answer for people who said, why did they wait so long to uh, honor you? This is what I found as an answer, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens. Today is our time and our season. Thank you. And thank you for sending your son, who was one of my students of United <laughs> States history. You have done a wonderful job, and we appreciate it. And to show our appreciation, we want to present you this plaque, which is a duplicate of the historic marker. Thank you so much. The late Clarence McKinney was born into a prominent Johnson City family of educators, politicians, and civic leaders. After graduating from Langston High School, he entered East Tennessee State College, where he studied biology for two years. He left school to enter the workforce and was employed by ITT North Electric in Gray, as well as by other businesses in Tennessee and outside the region. After a brief time away, he returned to Johnson City and helped found the Progressive League, which later became the Johnson City chapter of the NAACP. He was also a longtime election official for the Stratton Elementary School District. Clarence McKinney died in 2012 at the age of 72. Joining us today are Mr. McKinney's wife, Jean, and their sons, Robert and Charles. I invite them to come forward at this time. You going to say anything? No. no. I'm, I'm just messing with my mom. I knew she wasn't going to say a thing. But when, when I get nervous, I, I normally like to sing. I was going to see if I can hum. See if I can hum join the 10 bucks. But, I better just do what I've been called to do. And, uh, but I just thank, thank and praise the Lord, first of all, for just allowing me to be here and to stand here in, in honor of, of my father. And uh, also along with Charles and got, also got Jeffrey and Kenneth also. So all, all four of us are here today today with, with our mother. But I, I would just like to say that uh, I, I guess when I, when I look, look, look back on our childhood, my dad really did not talk about this much you know so I mean I, I learned about this later in life that he was 
one one of the first uh, black black students did 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 not learn much much about that when, when when we were younger. So so I did did not have he he just did not talk about it. He was a humble humble man. But uh, I will will say that uh, one one of the constant things in in our childhood when when we were growing up, the fact that he worked at ITT North Electric. We were going to the Appalachian Fair every Monday night, and, and, and my brothers can probably attest to that. They, they, they had Monday night there, and if election rolled around, he was definitely going to Stratton to, 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 rep, to represent uh, uh, the, the, their, their, to be represented there, there at Stratton. And uh, ju- just thinking back on, uh, he developed COPD and colon cancer, and one, one, probably the two reasons that he's not here, but in January of uh, uh, last year, they the Langston Heritage Group uh, honored honored the uh, four uh, students at the MLK breakfast, and my father would would not attend. He just, when when he developed that, he was he just scared, I guess, with his <clears throat> with with his breathing there, so he would not attend that. And then in February, the black black faculty and staff uh, honored them. We could could not get him out of the house to come come to that. But then in July. Finally got all four of them together, and I, I, just, I just think they can praise the Lord for that. At the Langston High School reunion, fin- finally got all four of, of the cl- classmates together, so we, we were thank- thankful for that. But uh, I, I really have two trailblazers in my family when I think about that. that my, my dad did, did what he did at ETSU, but also my older brother in 1965, the school was integrated, and so he was in one of the first classes uh, to, to, to integrate. He, he went to kindergarten that year and I just uh, just like I said we never really talked about that because it, as we've already talked about it it, it it went it went through without without a lot a lot of hitches there there was not not a lot of um, uh, th- things that, that that were brought up that and that we had to worry about the integration and and my dad always taught taught us that we need to get along with with everyone so we we, we did not have a problem there so I would just like to thank uh, uh, doc, dr nolan doc, dr stanton uh, the uh, the market marker committee for for just honoring my dad and thank you very much State University to present you with this plaque, which is the image of the historic marker. We appreciate your husband, your father. Thank you so much. Our fourth honoree today is an Army officer, Vietnam combat veteran, corporate executive, and civil rights activist. In 1958, prior to entering East Tennessee State College, where he studied biology and chemistry, George L. Nichols was the salutatorian of his graduating class at Langston High School. During his junior year at ETSC, he enrolled in the advanced ROTC program and became a member of the marching band of the following year. Upon graduating as a second lieutenant, he entered the military. When he left active duty in 1969, he had received numerous awards and decorations in recognition of his outstanding service. He entered the banking industry and worked at major banks in New York and New Jersey and also served as a senior level manager in the Metropolitan Transportation Authority in New York City. In spite of his demanding responsibilities in the military and the corporate world, he remained active in promoting civil rights, helping others, and furthering his education. In addition to his undergraduate degree from ETSC, he also holds an MBA from Adelphia University in Garden City, New York. He currently resides in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Join me in welcoming Mr. George L. Nichols. (laughs) 
Thank you very much, everyone. Um, first of all, there are a lot of people to thank. Um, Dr. Stanton, Dr. Nolan, Dr. Lewis, Dr. Drinkert, my home girl, Mary Alexander. Where are you, Mary? <laughs> okay. Uh, Joe Smith the committee, and people that we don't even know about that made this possible. Uh, I can assure you that uh, when we set foot on this campus in 1958, it did not cross our military minds to think that one day something like this would, would happen. It, it was just on, it, it was beyond our capability to understand anything like that. However, um, when I think of my life, I think of the foundations that were laid. The first foundation that was laid was in my home, my parents. The second one was at Langston, and Langston High School, um, I guess everybody thinks of their high school this way, but I don't think there, there was a better high school in the country than Langston. We didn't have the material things, but we had teachers who were, uh, went above and beyond, such as Mr. Carruthers, who is responsible for me being at ETSU. And when I was thinking about dropping out, when I, think I, when I thought I couldn't do it anymore, Mr. Carruthers was the one who talked me into staying here. So Langston was a foundation and then, believe it or not, ETSC as it was then is a foundation. Because I, I left here and as has been said, I went into the military and I, uh, from there I went into corporate America. Without the degree, I could not have gotten my commission. Without the commission, I could not have gotten into corporate America because when I went into Citibank, they were specifically looking for military officers who were getting out. The last group of people that I would like to thank are you. Out here, our friends and our families. You all have supported us since day one, and you are here today to enjoy the fruits that we all enjoy. This is not just for us, it's for you also. So give yourselves a hand, and thank you very, very much. I can call him George because we've been talking since 2010. Yes, we have. <laughs> it's nice to see you and nice thank you so you. much for thank coming. It, on behalf of Dr. Nolan, Dr. Stanton, and East Tennessee State University, it is my great pleasure to present you with this plaque which has the wording of the historic marker. Thank you so much. And to the audience, please be informed that if you would like to hear more of George, Please see him tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the ROTC. No, no, that's just for ROTC. Oh, no, it's for the public. The chair of the department. <laughs> <laughs> the public is invited. Yes, the public is invited. Okay. The public is invited to right. hear George Nichols tomorrow at 2 o'clock. <laughs> ROTC. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Johnson City native Mary Llewellyn Owens Wagner, who now resides in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, attended Dunbar Elementary School, was active in sports, 
and was chosen homecoming queen at Langston High School. She continued to excel after entering East Tennessee State College in 1958. She earned a work scholarship based on her college placement test score, and she became a member of Phi Gamma Mu International Honor Society in Social Studies. After graduating from ETSC with a degree in History and Social Studies, she taught at King Sports Douglas High School and later moved to Washington, D.C., where she taught for more than 30 years at Wheatley Elementary School. She loved teaching so much that she returned to the profession after her retirement and taught in the Prince George's County School System in Maryland. She and her husband, the late John Wagner, became parents of one child. Please join me in welcoming Mary Llewellyn Owens Wagner. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really an honor to be here today. And there are so many people to thank, as George has said. First, I thank my parents. At my home, it wasn't if you're going to college, it's when you're going to college. And East Tennessee, East Tennessee State opened and we came here. We were talking among ourselves and we, we thought we were too naive to be afraid when we came here. Now, the way that things had gone on the year before in uh, Little Rock, we probably should have been worried, but there was nothing like that at all. Uh, we met with uh, the president then, Dr. Dossett, and with the dean of women, Dean Ella Ross, and they were telling us that if, the, if our soldiers could fight in the wars and die for our country, we should be able to go to the schools in our country. And I really, while I'm really pleased and honored that you're doing this to us, I'd also like to give honor to the administration and staff and students at the time we came here because we didn't have any of the problems that other people had at other schools that they were integrating. I also would like to give honor to the present president and the emeritus president for doing this for us. It's really an honor. We're really happy about this. And East Tennessee State can be proud of the way that it handled the integration. The students can be proud. There are so many things that have gone on here that were really good things. And I just want to thank everybody for being here today. Thank the staff and the people that are responsible for this program today. We really appreciate it. And just thank East Tennessee State for giving us the foundation that it did. And we were happy that we could open the doors for others to follow us. Thank you. University. It is my great pleasure to present to you this plaque which has the wording of the historic marker. Thank you so much for desegregating East Tennessee State College. Thank you. Wagner and I have something else in common. She is a history major. She was a history major at East yes. Tennessee State College. Right. Uh, she majored in history and social studies. And because she is a history major, and I'm a history major and a history professor, as you were, we will hear from her tomorrow at 945 in Rogers Stout. The history department will present her to history majors and anyone else who wishes to come. So please come tomorrow at Roger Stout, uh, room 124, 
at 9.45 a.m. Thank you so much. It's now my great pleasure to turn the podium over to my very good friend and mentor, the President Emeritus of East Tennessee State University, Dr. Paul E. Stanton, Jr. Thank you, Fred, and good afternoon. Dr. Nolan, thank you for your remarks earlier. I'm pleased to be able to work with you and support you in all of your endeavors. Now, I had the opportunity to be the president serving at the time of our centennial. What a special time that was. A year, almost two years, were spent in leading up, building up to the centennial celebration year. And during that time, Fred Sausman uh, was the one that chaired the steering committee, putting all the subcommittees and really hundreds of people in place to make it all happen. And there were some special occasions and special people. I had the opportunity to meet a lady who was the oldest living human being in the world, Bess Brown Cooper. She lived to be 116 years old. She passed away a few months ago wearing her ETSU ring. I had the opportunity to be part of a commemorative ceremony for George L. Carter. Mr. Carter gave the property, his farm, on which we're situated today. He additionally gave $100,000 to convince the governor of the day that we needed to start this normal school. So we had a bust created, and it's out near Carter Hall, in the image of Mr. Carter. But nothing has been more important. Nothing has stood out more in the planning and the celebrating of that centennial year than the creation of the committee led by Dr. Dorothy uh, Hawkshaw, Drinkard Hawkshaw, excuse me, and her efforts to bring people together to make this possible. And then we had individuals like Toby Bledsoe, the mayor, and she's right, these markers don't just magically appear. And to Mary Alexander, who always, I always say yes ma'am to when she <laughs> asked me to do something. So I understand the pressure that you were under. Now, as we celebrate today, it will be, I pledge this to you in my heart of hearts, the most special day of any we had during the centennial year. And it's one that I'll remember forever. Now, I was invited by Mary Alexander to speak at the Martin Luther King breakfast a year and a half ago. And at that breakfast, my topic was about some of the strong and great African Americans that I'd had the pleasure to know, to meet with, to talk with. And one of my favorite individuals of all time was a gentleman named Dr. Hamilton Holmes. He's deceased now. Ham, as I call him, was one of the first two black students to integrate the University of Georgia. And Hamilton and I would sit in the doctor's lounge, he was a surgeon, as was I, and we'd sit in and talk about those days of tires being slashed, of having to call in the state troopers in Georgia, the National Guard in Georgia, threats on his life, mobs outside his residence hall and that of Charlene Hunter, now Charlene Hunter Galt, who was the woman that also integrated the same day as Hamilton Holmes. So as I was presenting that, I was thinking and had the opportunity to sit with George Nichols at the breakfast. And so when I went back, I said, Mr. Nichols, let me ask you something. I said, when you integrated East Tennessee State College in 1958, were you scared? 
Were you ever threatened? Did you fear to lose your life? And he said, he looked at me kind of quizzically and he said, no. He says, the only thing I recall is I felt sort of isolated at first. And he says, but you know, I joined the ROTC, friends came from all around, and it led, of course, to what you heard in his introduction this morning. He became a brilliant leader in the military. So what was happening in Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, didn't happen here. And I think it's because of the quality of these students, the first to come in 56 and 58, what they stood for, what they wanted was to be educated and to be leaders as you have heard they are in their fields and lives ahead. And as they have come forward today and have been congratulated, I think of them, and as a couple indicated, maybe all three, they recognize the leadership, the type of faculty and staff and students and administration that was here in 56 and 58 that just wanted it to work. This was Northeast Tennessee and by George, it would work here. So thank you all for letting me be a part. God bless you and have a great day.
Can we please stand? I want to thank everyone again for taking the time to be a part of this celebration. History provides moments for opportunity and for reflection. And as we reflect upon our history, we learn of the values that provide the foundation, not only for individuals, but for society. Today we came to you with one voice, a voice that came strong. Today we came to you as one people. And today we came to you as one institution, an institution that more than 50 years ago was on the right side of history, and an institution that because of the time, talents, investment, courage, and bravery of the people who are here today stands poised to remain on the right side of history for generations to come. I thank you all for all that you do for this institution and our students, 
and hope that you'll join us in the hallway for refreshments and continued celebration. Everyone have a wonderful day.